morning, Fit Fam, and a happy Sunday. I hope you guys like homemade pierogies because I certainly do. Today's guests on Mary's Kitchen have both been long-term members of Fit Club, both love to travel, both love to garden, and both love making pierogies. You may call them two peas in a pod. Please welcome Christine and Michelle to, to share their special homemade recipe. Hello. Good morning. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having us. Yes, awesome. This is a real treat. It's a treat for me too because <laughs> I don't really have homemade pierogies very often. So I mean, I've been saving my my treats for this. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. awesome. You're in for your exactly. Yeah. Yes, and I worked out really hard for this. <laughs> so today we're making pierogies. We're making pierogies. Awesome. So I've been making pierogies all my life. Mm -hmm. uh, just the last year I've been doing it by myself okay and Michelle's been doing it forever yeah I've been doing it forever I mean Ukrainian right so okay Bobby used to teach us how to make pierogies and my mom made pierogies for years and now I make them but not as often as I should because then, they, then they're in the freezer to eat and I really don't need the pierogies I see <laughs> they're a treat we try to do a Christmas Easter mm -hmm. birthdays mm -hmm. something like that so and now you guys are here to share or show me how to make this pierogies. Right. and everyone else let's get started it's all good so mm -hmm. when you're making pierogies everyone has a different way of doing it mm -hmm. or the way that they were taught by their baba right and it's all special to them uh, some people uh, they just use flour and sour cream okay for their dough uh, some people don't are like different fillings so there's the regular one is uh, potato and cheese an onion um, but if you're Shelly, you like prunes. Prunes? Prunes. Prune oh, I didn't yeah. know that. And basically, you just get the, the chunk of prunes mm -hmm. is the best uh, in your in the, I guess, baking section. And my mom used to just boil it a little bit. And then once it cooled, then you just, you literally just scoop it. Okay. Um, so when you say prune pierogies, is it like just prunes and potatoes? No, nope. no potatoes. No potatoes. Just the just fruit. The, just the fruit. Yeah. Wow. Just the fruit. So okay. a lot, uh, like for us, a special treat would be uh, like a Saskatoon. Okay. Pierogies, and basically it's just the Saskatoons, mm -hmm. a little bit of sugar, uh, strawberries. My mother-in-law likes mean strawberry pierogies. Oh They're my goodness. So good. They are okay. really good. It's more like a treat and everything. Um, there's uh, blueberries. Uh, any fruit you can think of, you can use for your blueberry fill. Mm -hmm for your filling uh, instead of potato a lot use uh, mushrooms okay mushrooms mm -hmm. and the on onions uh, Ukrainians call them papanki mm -hmm. and normally um, like our like my Bob and probably yours uh, they actually went to the bush and they would find pick the, the right mushrooms pick the right mushrooms because there's a certain type that they had to pick and then they would usually uh, saute them and then they would freeze them this way they would have them throughout uh, till Christmas because that was a big treat right right at Christmas time um, so yeah um, let's get started let's get started but today we're making the basic uh, making... cheese and potato pierogi yeah. okay yeah all right so basically I made the filling uh, ahead of time so we have the filling here so basically what it is is I just use regular potatoes the red potatoes usually about a bag and just a regular onion um, the onion, I usually fry up, we usually fry up the onion with butter and everything because you would use that for your filling. Uh, so take your potato, peel it, uh, cube it, uh, boil it, uh, and you want it kind of like a mush, um, not mushy, but you, you, you just know, you take your fork and if you can stab it, uh, it works good. More mushy than a mashed potato. Okay, so basically peel your potatoes uh, and boil it and then mash it. Yes. yes, with your onion. Yes, okay. but your onion, you take your onion, uh, you um, you cut it up really fine and everything, and we just have a sample here, so you want your uh, onions transparent and you want lots of butter in there. Okay, so lots of butter and lots of onion. Yes. Okay, sautéed. Sautéed and everything, so your house would, uh, would smell and you'd be crying, you'd cry lots. <laughs> <laughs> um, Best potatoes to use is uh, when you pick potatoes from your garden. Um, you know when your potatoes, like they start making the little 
I call these eyes. Yeah. Okay. And when they actually start coming out, those mm -hmm. are actually the best potatoes to use for your pierogies. Why is that? Potatoes are better. They have a better flavor. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the older potatoes are the better ones. Uh, these ones are they're picked when they're still kind of green. Right. So your best is your garden potatoes. Okay. It is a big time difference. But these are just yeah. Well, so once you have all everything boiled. And your potatoes, you're mashing them like you would mash with normal potatoes. You would take your onion and butter. You would dump that in. You would do salt and pepper. Usually with pepper, you want to do a white pepper mm -hmm. because the black pepper you do see. But I, as you can see, I forgot to buy the white pepper. So <laughs> that's why there's black spots and there's the pepper only. Um, this was made last night. And then you want to put, uh, you want to shred uh, just mild cheese or old cheese. Shred it and mash it in at the same time. When the potatoes are hot, so it melts in, so you get the creaminess. I see, okay. And, and then when you mash it, it becomes creamy with the cheese in there. Okay. It's more of like, a, it looks like a potato, but it's a real creamy, creamy potato. Okay. Yeah. That comes from the cheese. From the cheese, <laughs> okay. And it has to be, is that cheddar cheese? This this is uh, mild ch uh, cheese. Uh, you can use old cheese too, depending on what flavor and texture you want and everything. Um, the ch the potato or the pierogi potatoes that you buy in the store, like the freezer one, right. those are usually made with powdered cheese. That's I why see. it's so cheap. Okay. Um, and that's why homemade pierogies are so expensive because by the time you're done with your cheese, by the time you're done everything, like it, it is very costly and everything. Okay. So I mashed up and then put it into the uh, fridge for overnight or whatever. You don't want to use it warm because if you do, um, your dough gets uh, watery. Mm -hmm. And then when you boil your uh, pierogies, um, basically the filling goes to the bottom. I see. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to just do uh, a quick uh, version of uh, the pierogi dough. Just for the fact that pierogies, you want to um, have it sit for about two hours or so because you want the uh, dough to rise and everything. Um, so we're going to just do a quick version of it. And then I have, uh, I made some this morning. Uh, best bet is when you are cooking your potatoes, I always have a, um, a bowl in the sink mm -hmm. and then I put my strainer on top because you want to cook, you want to cook your, you want to keep your potato water. Okay. Some people say it's a better flavor, um, but when my great baba would make pierogies, they always had to carry their water from the garage because mm -hmm. they only had a, a hand pump. Okay. So uh, it was one little bit of water that they never had to carry, and it, they say it gives more flavor to the dough. So I just kept up the tradition. Okay. So Michelle, if you want to do four cups of flour. So that, right now we're making the dough. Now we're okay. making the dough. And then if you do you want to do, um, we're going to do half a cup of oil. Half a cup of oil, okay. Half a cup of oil. And then if you want to get um, one and a half cups of warm water. One and a half cups? Yes. There's a hat. Okay. I can do that. And just add it straight to the dough? Yeah. Um, that's where the potato water would come in really handy. Um, and I usually, um, I'll keep the potato water overnight in the fridge and then I'll put it back on the stove in the morning when I make my dough uh, because you want it warm. I see, okay. Just gonna let this heat up a little bit. Okay, while okay. you're doing that, Michelle, do you wanna put a teaspoon of salt? Okay, so here's one cup and then half a cup, you said? Yeah, here's a half a cup. Yeah, half oh. a cup. Or it doesn't matter. Okay, well let's, let's be precise. Oh, I was almost... Almost, almost there. there. <laughs> almost One there. One thing about pierogi dough. Okay, who would like to? Uh, She's got the mustard. Okay, <laughs> you're gonna stir it. Oh, stir it. Okay. So now, the, so as you can see, it doesn't look like much. That's it. That's it That's for it. the dough. That's it for That's the dough. That's so easy. It is, but you have to. Um, it has to sit because if it doesn't sit, um, it's not gonna rise. Oh, okay. Um, the thing is about the pierogi dough, when you make it, um, you just keep on adding things until it looks right. Does this look right? Or do it, I have to keep stirring it? It looks right because it, it's almost like a flaky right. yeah. flaky dough. And then um, you'll see, like it, everything has to, it kind of blends together, works together. Right. 
And do I need it or? Well, you'll need it after. Okay. Just tell me when. <laughs> so do we think we need to add a little bit more, Michelle? Flour? You want more flour or it's going to say more oil? More oil in here. More oil. Okay, yeah, let's so add just a tad more oil. And it's kind of done by feel, right? Like you, you know when it's right. You, you, you get accustomed, like just the feeling. It's, it's not... My recipe my cup call for four cups. Yours will call for three. Uh, as I said, some people just did flour and uh, sour cream, and they would do it in a, like a bread maker kind of thing. Um, it's coming together already. Mm -hmm. It will. Okay. It will. And then once it's not like sticky, then we can actually get in there and we can actually knead it. Okay. I, I think it looks, let's do it. Let's knead it. So. That's the fun part. So then we'll just knead it a little bit, and then we'll put it aside because I bought, I made... Right. Is this um, how you need it? Yep. <laughs> I don't work with flour, as you can tell. <laughs> and then just knead it, and then we'll just let it sit. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's coming together. It comes together, but you know what? It's when you, uh, you'll notice in the one that I made this morning, you'll notice it's Real how it's, yeah. yeah. It's and pliable, how yeah. long am I supposed to knead it for? I, well, it feels right. <laughs> you, just, you just get the knack, right? I think it looks perfect already. <laughs> but, it's still a little flaky. So oh, okay. So when you just, don't see any more flakes. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, too, like my baba, and I know many other babas, uh, what they used to do is they had fires to heat their house and everything. And so a lot of people would take their tupper, big Tupperware container bowl and they would put it by the fire. Always cover it with a towel and put it by Wipe the fire. Towel. So yeah, so it doesn't dry out, and uh, that's why the like my baba and my great baba's uh, pierogies always tasted better because they would take that time with the wet towel, wrap it around their bowl, and they would put it by the fire because you always wanted the the warm. So it sounds like you need a lot of love and care yes. for this for pierogies, really. Yes, I don't think I've ever really. I don't think I appreciate how much time it took to make pierogies until I started kneading this. Oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's very time. It's, it takes a whole day to make about 250, 300 pierogies. Wow. So that looks about right. That looks right? Okay. Yeah. So there you have it. So we'll just put it back in Good there. Job. Good job. Yay. Okay, that's perfect. You should come over and make them more often. Uh, sure, I like doing stuff like this. So we'll just set that aside. Okay. Because we made... So that has to rest for a couple of hours. Yeah. Best is about two hours. Two hours. But you know what? It can go for longer. Maybe it's my old mom's schooling. Like, you always cover it up with a towel, a heavy towel. So we're going to flour the surface. So, so this is one that we've um, pre-made in advance. It's been okay. resting for a day. Nope. Uh, I made it about 8 o'clock this morning. Oh, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to flour the surface. Um, I'll flower this. Ah. Okay, and so we'll just leave that in the bowl. Oh, and leave then, in the bowl? Okay. Yeah, and if you want, Michelle, do you want to cut two chunks? Um, a lot of uh, old babas, they believe the Costco flour actually works the best. Don't ask me why or how or is it true? I don't know. And babas mean, is it grand grandmother? Grandmother yeah. in Ukrainian? Yeah. Okay. And lots of grandmothers always, don't insult me, I'm, a, I'm, not, a, I'm not a grandma, I'm a baba. So they, they get insulted, believe it okay. or not. So the you old call traditional them babas. Yes. I see. So just Michelle's going to give you a good demonstration. So okay. This is kind of where you want to knead it. And one thing about pierogi dough, if you want to start kneading it. Oh, kneading it? And just what Michelle's, just flip it and just you work with it, right? Am I flattening it? Yep. Yeah. Because eventually you want to roll it out like a, a pizza. Got it. A pizza dough. So more or less that's what it is, right? So how long have you guys been friends for? About a year? Yeah. We didn't really meet at the beginning of no. the time. We kind of met just 
when you started coming to the earlier morning classes. Mm -hmm. You guys met at the gym yeah. when you both started doing the early morning classes. Yes, and then we just got hooked because we... And the next thing you know, we're going for coffee, we're going for walks. We're... Right. You guys are now two peas in, in a, a pod. In a pod, yeah. <laughs> both love to garden. Both love making pierogies. Just match made in heaven. Okay, is this good or... That's good. And now or you, sometimes you could do is you can stretch it out if okay. you want. Because it all depends on how much rolling you also want to do. As you can see, Michelle's like really pushing okay, down. Okay, Michelle is so fast and I'm still stretching <laughs> this. It's the Ukrainian in me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to start rolling too. <laughs> so it's about what, about an in or half an inch thick you want to do it, Michelle? About yeah. A little bit less. And you always want to make sure your dough is covered. Okay, so it doesn't dry out. It doesn't dry out because it will dry oh, out. Sorry. And one thing about the pierogi dough, <laughs> even oh, when gosh. it gets, because pierogi dough will get tough. Uh huh. Um, you can work with it. So even though you think it, you flopped it, you can work with it. Okay, More Michelle, can you roll up mine? <laughs> Three spots. <spots. laughs> yeah. So if you want to just let's roll, do that. If you. There we go. And then you just keep on flipping it because if you don't have enough flour at the bottom, mm -hmm. it, it will stick. Oh, and you see, I thought I had lots of flour in mine because I wasn't stretching, but I apparently not. Okay, so we roll it out until it's about. That's yeah, that should thick. be. That's too thick. Uh, yeah. That should be okay. This one, yeah. okay. Because once we cut them, once we cut them up and everything. Um, you're going to stretch it a little bit, right? Better. So you don't want too thin. Maybe start do that a little bit. That so this looks like it's about... You want it like about half an inch. Half an inch? Yeah, or like what what That's you good. have here is perfect. Okay. So basically, then, then you, you take your... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Michelle. Take your rye glass. <laughs> you know what? Take your rye glass? Yep. It has to be a rye glass, no other glass. That's right. No water glass. No, it has to be rye. Yes. Or vodka. I'd vodka yeah. would be the best. <laughs> Take your glass. Then you put it in the middle. And you go right to the yeah. side because you want to try and get as much as you can in that one spot. Okay. And then turn and twist. Turn and, and twist. Then, yeah. And then pull it out. Can you do your next? Oh, okay. So what we already did prior is we got a pot of water and it, we filled it about half ways and we put oil in it so it's been boiling. So normally you want to have it, it so it's a raging boil when you cook your pierogies. The other thing too with the pierogies is I like putting them on a, a, a tray with parchment paper and everything and I like uh, freezing them uh, without being cooked. Because then, when you actually um, when you actually go and make them again, it, they taste fresh. Okay. So I'll just put these to the side, maybe, and then. Oh, I think I need oh. more flour in my rye glass. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. And then we'll do the filling all together. So yeah, and you just twist and I'm trying to. <laughs> you have to get that knack. Muscle. And it's not even so much muscle, it's just you just Oh, okay, yeah, I got it. I got it. There I, we go. Because my my great baba who made the most oh the greatest pierogies, she was weak. But yet she could take she that. She was weak. She, no, she was incredibly like she was this tiny little baba. And but yet you give her that cup and you get her to do that and oh my goodness it's all good it's just yeah it's the twist it's the twisting um but you can use cookie cutters also would that work you or could but then that's not you it's want not you have to have the right size you have to have the right okay size. to be able to stretch it to put your filling in oh wow okay and yeah those these ones i found these in my husband's little bar stash and they're at my absolute favorite to make the that because they become like the perfect perfect circle okay so there we have Mary's circles. They're beautiful. <laughs> They're beautiful circles. I, I tried. <laughs> it's all about the twisting. 
And it's okay if they're not perfect. You can pull them a little bit. Okay, let me try to cut that out. There we go. And then Michelle, I'll give this to you to re-roll. Sure. <laughs> so basically when you're done, you put a little bit of flour on it and then mm -hmm. you want to squish it together right away because uh, if you're not going to, if you're not going to roll it out again, yes. you want it, you want to make sure it's like all stuck together. Okay. And then if you're, if you don't use it again, yes. If you don't use it again, this way it doesn't dry itself. Anymore. Right. Here, I'll let I you see. roll it by yourself. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you could do it. If you can lift weights, you can do this. But it's a different type, right? <laughs> it's coming together. So just think of you're making pizza dough, but it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Okay, so I made um, homemade pizza maybe two months ago, and I was supposed to stretch out the dough. Like guess this? Yes, and guess who rips the dough? <laughs> Me. <laughs> and then last week I was making homemade rotis. Mm. And I had to work with dough again, and I thought, oh dear. <laughs> I did not think I had to make dough again this week. <laughs> Surprise! Surprise! You should bring the balloon. Surprise! <laughs> no, it's coming together. See, you're getting the hang of it. There. And then just keep on flipping and flopping it. Okay. Just like a, a pizza, more or less. So, I mean, am I supposed to start in the middle and you stretch out? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Oh, no, the sides work. Which way it goes. The sides work well, too. Okay, there we go. See, once you get the hang of it. Okay, I think that's a good thinness. We can give you more flour if you want. Powder? Flour. Oh. I think there was something in that cup that I told you what it was for. <laughs> it's for rye. <laughs> Twisting. Oops. Oh dear. Okay. So, um, I usually triple the recipe. So this batch here uh, that I made is 12 cups of flour, one and a half cups of oil, four and a half cups of warm water, which is the potato water, and three teaspoons of salt. And that's all the recipe is. Um, and that makes about 250, 300 pierogies. Oh, wow. Okay, can we... Um... Here. Oh, okay. I'll give this I, to you. Yeah, and I think we're good to go. We're good to go as soon as Michelle's done hers. Okay. But yeah, again, before you put it away, make sure you squish it together. I didn't twist. <gasps> she didn't do the twist. You oh, you need to do the twist. You gotta do the twist, Michelle. You know that. It's a party, remember? <laughs> <laughs> pierogi party. There is pierogi parties. It's fun. Super. Okay. So next we'll do the filling. So the filling is the mashed potatoes, the, um, I'll give you this. I'll give Michelle that. And so basically you have that, so you want to stretch it out a little bit. Um, some people use a scooper. I prefer not, but a lot of the ladies in the church, they usually... Um, they'll scoop it the day before and then they'll put it on trays with parchment paper some freeze it and everything But Michelle and I just like doing it with a little teaspoon and uh, Michelle's doing an awesome job. Okay, so explain Michelle. So we flatten it out. Take the scoops. Take, oh, so we take you this. You kind of have to judge how much you're going to put in there. About half a teaspoon. Yeah. Oh, half? Yeah, okay. but like you can see how the mass Is enough? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe too much. Too much? Yeah. You can tell it'll start popping out. Okay. So you put that in the middle. And then you pinch it together. Pinch it together. So you fold yep. it. And just pinch like it. That. Pinch. Beautiful. Yay. Oh, and, and do I flan out the filling or just leave it? Just leave it bulky. Just leave it bulky. Yeah. There you have this it. This is the trick. It's got to stick together or else they'll open and pop out your potato soup. Okay. <laughs> I, you, you don't want potato soup. No. <laughs> 
No. Okay. So I'm flattening it. I think it sticks. Yeah. Looks yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Looks good. Okay. Oh, that's easy. You don't. I thought you were supposed to add water to make it stick. Some people might. Yes. Uh, add just like a like dip their water or dip their finger mm -hmm. in the water, mm -hmm. um, just to give it. Depending on the type of dough and everything. I heard it was sticky, so you're good. Okay. So this is sticky dough. Okay. Nope. So some people do egg, but they do egg in the uh, in the dough. I was not taught like that, but I did find a recipe just in case someone was asking, um, where they, oops, which one? You, they do uh, water, oil, egg, and flour, soda, and salt. The other thing, so the, that's a different way. It, it's all, more or less pierogies is not, let's look in the recipe on, or YouTube it, it's how you were taught by your, your, your babas. Not grandma's babas. babas. <laughs> My mom, if you called her grandma, she would have a. She wouldn't answer. She wouldn't answer. <laughs> so do not use the G word. No. 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 No G words allowed. Okay. You're doing awesome. I always have to double check to make sure that it's pressed mm -hmm. together because I really don't want soup at all. You know what? It happens, and that's why. Um, if you know you're not going to eat them right away, that's why it's best to not cook them. So um, basically keep them on the parchment paper and everything. Freeze them and then want, freeze them for about a day. Um, and then you can put them in like a Ziploc bag. I usually do like maybe two, two dozen a bag mm -hmm. or something. And, um, and then when I'm ready to use them, then I'll boil them. Because if you boil them prior and then you freeze them, they tend to stick together a lot. I see. Okay. That's why people are like, well, why aren't they cooked? Like if I give friends or family um, my progies, it's like, why aren't they cooked? It's because they stick together and then you get the potato soup kind of thing. Right, right. These are mine and they all... Every one of them looks different. <laughs> you know what? I still make them different. Michelle's been doing it longer, and she's better at it than, than I am. So um, I'm also much older than you. You're not much older than me. <laughs> and so do you guys ever spend time together making progies? We did one. We did one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> because my husband decided to go camping one day. Uh, right away, and he knew I was making pierogies, and Michelle just so happened to drop by. I'm like, you're making pierogies, and she's like, what? And those are the best friends. Yeah. Just jump right just in. Just jump right in. <laughs> she has your back. She will make pierogies with you. That's right. But oh. you know what? This is actually pretty fun. I like it. Some people, or some babas think it's an art, right? Who can I make the most perfect pierogi? And I believe it, because I used to roll a lot of egg rolls with my mom, right? Oh, yeah, and <clears throat> egg rolls is like making pierogies. You ha have, it's an art. You have to roll really nice, tight ones, right? Mm -hmm. And so I hated doing it as a child with my mom, but then I became really good at it. And then my rolls actually became, I think they're beautiful. There's no, <laughs> there's no, Spaces where um, oil can go inside of your egg rolls, so right. I think so you have when you tight. yeah they're very yeah. they're beautiful. So I think it is an art, and yeah, if you are, I can make yeah I can oh. make egg rolls. That'd I love rolling it because it's you have to make beautiful egg rolls. You don't want sloppy egg rolls. It has to be beautiful. Well, and that's the thing with pierogies. You want to make it's an art, and if you if you ever have a chance to volunteer at a a Ukrainian church to make pierogies, you have to do it because it's amazing. It's amazing the production line that yeah. they have, and the men actually get in on it too. Men are the, usually the ones that are the, doing the peeling of the potatoes and everything, and rolling the dough because they got muscles, and rolling the dough <laughs> and everything. So they have their steps, um, but then it's like, oh well, those are so and so's because you can tell the way she pinched them. <laughs> And, oh yeah, <laughs> oh, those are those are so and so's, and it's it's actually hilarious to watch. But it's they are always looking for volunteers, mm -hmm. and you know what? I think you come home with a dozen or two dozen pierogies as a thank you. And okay. oh, thank you. Yours are beautiful. You should have seen mine. Oh, you know what? There's I just see one. Right I need to pinch Open. it. Yes. But it's funny you say that because, like I said, when I would be making my egg rolls with my mom. I would have my own separate tray because I thought they were beautiful and I wanted them to be separated. 
to show the difference of mine and how other people's egg rolls look mm -hmm. like. But another famous one too is uh, dry cottage cheese yes. and salt and pepper. Some people put an egg in there to make sure that cottage cheese sticks together because it's it drop, it's the it comes in a bag. Um, and then always onion and butter. You can never go wrong with protease and butter and onion. Right. Um, that's the main main thing. Can we start cooking a few now? Um, I usually wait for about because it's a bigger pot. I usually wait for about. Two dozen, but I guess we can start. Two dozen, okay. Okay, while you start cooking those, we so, can, Michelle will be working okay. over time. So I'm going to just <laughs> boil them. This is a fancy stove, I don't know how to use it. So you just pop them in your boiling water, make sure it's like raging bubbles. Um, there's oil in there that you put in previous. And you have to have oil in your water? Yes, because okay. otherwise it'll stick to the bottom. And how long are we supposed to let it boil for? Usually, uh, usually um, about three to five minutes. They'll float to the top. They'll float to the top, but and just keep it stirring because you don't want them to settle on the bottom. I see. Okay. Then that you'll get the potato soup. Right. Right. And then in this pot here, I got just melted butter. And in my opinion, something about melted butter on the stove versus the microwave it tastes different. I believe it, I really do. So we'll just give that a few minutes in there. And then the leftover um, onion and uh, butter, when, you're, when you are eating them, um, we put uh, the leftover onion and butter on top of it. Okay. But not when you're, not when you're putting it in the pan, uh, because you want to do kind of like a layer of uh, Pierogi, butter, pierogi, butter kind of thing, so this way they don't stick together. Maybe I'll turn that up. So yeah, we'll give it a few minutes. Okay. They all look different. This one looks like a moon. This one looks like... <laughs> it's all good. When I, when I first did it by myself, because uh, my mother-in-law used to do more, uh, even though she wasn't even Ukrainian, but she married a Ukrainian. Uh, she had to be taught. So on the farm, she had to be taught by her mother-in-law that was 100% Ukrainian. And unfortunately, she passed away last year. So we used up all her pierogies, and it's like, now what? Oh. <laughs> So I had to, okay, this is how she taught me, and this is how my mom taught me. Okay, I'm going to take both traditions um, because they were slightly different, and I got to make it a kind of mine so I can teach my three. I have three girls, and my son actually has gotten into it and everything, but the first time I did it by myself, I had them long because I didn't let the filling cool. So it was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? And I decided instead of mashing the, the potatoes, I thought, I'm going to put them in a blender. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was just and gonna, it changes everything, it right? It changes everything. Because yes. I thought I was going to be that, you know, even though I'm older, I thought I'd be that smart ass kid. And sorry, the language. Mm -hmm. I thought I would be that smarty pants and uh, put it in the blender and save my time from mashing while it doesn't work because it's, it's liquid. So as you can see, the if you come and see, the they're starting to boil to the top. Mm -hmm. So you kind of want to wait until all of them are more or less boiled to the top, and that's how you know that they're done. Okay. So it really only takes just a few minutes. Yeah. Three, three to five. Three to five. Three to five minutes. There is there is a lady in Dougal, Manitoba. She does make gluten free pierogies. Okay. So there is a thing. Uh, she makes them handmade and everything. She has a little shop. Uh, truly amazing. She makes all different kinds and everything. Oh, wow. So I'll just give it a few more minutes. Uh, one thing good with uh, the pierogies, which is typical Ukrainian style, um, you eat them with lots of bacon, too. Or um, 
Is it called kubasan? Is that yes? You, okay. Actually, funny you say that because my kubasa. Kubasa. Yeah. Kabaska. Um, I don't garlic know how to say sauces. It. Yep. <laughs> um, I, this is my brand in particular that I love to go to. You can't get it in the city. Um, I love dealing with them. You get them back and sealed, um, and they freeze forever, and they still taste so good. Um, at my home. If I don't serve it when, because I we entertain lots, and if I don't serve uh, uh, kubasa and cheese and crackers, they look at me like, um, "Hello." <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to say that they're pretty well done. We'll just get them out. We'll put them in the bowl. I think we're almost done, Michelle. We are. I don't know how many we made. I'm really trying to pinch it so that you're it's doing perfect. excellent. Thank you. <laughs> As I said, my first time doing it by myself, thinking, "Oh, I can do it, no problem," you know. And I've done it for a while. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> and then you just want to pinch your butter on. Melt the butter. And you want to just shake it and start. Make sure the butter gets everywhere because if it doesn't, your pogies will stick together. And you don't want that. And when you get good at it, you can like flop them. Okay. And is that how it's served then? Yep. Yeah. And then you serve them like that. That's it? That's it. Oh, so, I had no idea because I, you don't fry it at all? It, some people like them fried, some people don't. I like it mushy. Like, well, not mushy, but I like it cost like how you made it and I've tried to make it this way and I didn't know how but now I know how. What do you have a you can fry them and what some people do is just take the their pan like this they yes. dump out the stuff in a measuring cup and then they just take their pierogies like this and then they fry it. Okay I guess it really depends on your preference. Mm -hmm. I know RJ likes his fried. Um, I love mine fried. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband doesn't. I see. He likes them like this. I like so, it that way. <laughs> so then once you put them on your plate, mm -hmm. you just, do you have a plate? I do, yes. If you want to grab a plate over there, my hands are just a little bit messy. Do you have a smaller plate or if it doesn't matter? I do have smaller plates. So this is good. That's fine. Okay. So you just want to take your pierogies. Like once you're done, so basically you can just fry them again. Like fry them in your pot. Right, so it gets crispy if, if you, you want. If you want crispy. And then I just take and there you go. Oh wow. Beautiful. And then you put your kubasa on the side. Okay, I'll well let's cut some kubasa and let's cook some of that. Sure. There's twenty-two right there. There's twenty-two? Yeah. So do you want to cut this and or do you want to try boiling this and I'll cut this up? Sure. So you could put all those in the pot. Okay. And just plunk them in. Be careful you don't Oops. get slashed. Oh dear. Okay. There we go. Now I know how to do it. Okay. And so are we frying the kubasa? You know what? You can fry the kubasa or you can just eat it raw like this. And in our preference, we like it uh, we like it raw. She was amazing. This kubasa, um, they do major fundraisings for the schools. Um, so it's from Interlake Packers in St. Laurent. Um, they're fabulous to deal with. And... Uh, we usually do a fundraiser twice a year for my daughter's school. And like as I said, it comes packaged sealed. And it lasts forever in the freezer. And it still tastes fresh. Uh, some people like the skin, the casing. I don't because I find you're always chewing and chewing and it gets stringy, right? So I just, I just slice it up. 
some some people um, want to fry it. If you want to fry it, we can fry a couple just so you can get a, or you can eat it raw like this because it's already cooked. Right. And it is, believe it or not, it is gluten free. So, do you want to fry a couple or? No, I think if you don't normally cook it, then I think that's fine. Um, I like it cut up like this. Mm -hmm. But what, if you're going to fry it, my suggestion is because it will dry out, is that uh, I cut it into chunks. And my kids actually, they love, we will we'll make pierogies when we're camping. So we'll, I'll just boil them and everything. And then we take chunks of kuba sauce. So we'll take a chunk, say about like this. And we'll put it on a stick and we'll actually put it on the fire. Okay. Well, and that's then we, nice. It's so good on the fire. Um, if you're if you don't have a fryer or a fire, sorry. Um, I usually just do the chunks and I just cut them in half because it'll cook faster. So either way. So this is one. Um, lots of people in the olden days would make their own uh, sausage, um, or they'd make uh, buck, buckwheat sausage, uh, which is called blood sausage. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's put some on a plate here. I got this plate here. Oh, okay. Put that. And that's how you would normally eat it, is the pierogies and the sausage? Yeah, normally I would cook the sausage oh, okay. on the fire and everything, and right. then there's sour cream. You cannot forget the sour cream. This is a must for your I'll pierogies. Oh, let me just dab a little bit. See, I'm not a sour cream fan, so I actually just eat them like this with a little bit of salt. So, and oh, there you have there it. There you go. And that's it. That was actually a lot easier than I thought on how to make pierogies. The only thing is, like, as pierogies, it's just time consuming. Right. It. So, uh, peeling the potatoes, peeling the potatoes, just the prep work and everything. But I think it's a bonding experience, too, if you have great friends, family to help you making pierogies. Mm -hmm. The other, the other thing is, um, because it's I'm always try some. Oh, please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Mmm, uh, <laughs> so good. Oh my gosh, they're they're to die for. Mm -hmm. I really love that homemade taste. It's the love, I mm -hmm. think. And as I said, everyone makes them totally different. Um, one thing we always thought as when we were kids. We always hope that there is more dough left over than the potato left over because it's always a rough guess on how much you're making or how big your uh, your dough is or how thin you go. Mm -hmm. We always determine so you can never get the right amount. Um, but as kids, it was like, okay, there's going to be dough. And you would just sit there and your hands would vibrate and you would just shake. And what my mom used to do and what my baba used to do is they would still cut the circles out and then they would have their uh, frying pan with the butter and everything. Right. They would boil, so they would take the disc. They would take the disc like this. Okay. And they would boil it. They would boil it, and then after they boil, after they boiled it, um, they would fry it in the butter, and they would put cinnamon and sugar on it. Oh. And I'm telling you, <laughs> that as sounds kids, like a treat. <laughs> as kids, you would just sit there and vibrate, and just like. <gasps> So yeah, you know, cinnamon and sugar, cinnamon and sugar, cinnamon mm. and sugar, and that was our dessert. So, and then when there was more potato and cheese left over, it was like, what do you do with it? Oh, my mom, my mom would sometimes make uh, like little patties. Okay. And she would just fry them in the butter. But Ukrainians is butter and onion and garlic, and you got a meal somehow. <laughs> That's true. So yeah, thank you, ladies, for. We have Brenda here. You say hello, Brenda. Anita. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Brenda. And then um, Sandy asks, can you use cheese whiz? Cheese whiz. You can use cheese whiz, but it does have a different taste. Um, my mom, uh, before she did uh, cheese whiz, uh, but she 
Over the years, she found that the cheese whiz wasn't the way it used to taste. Okay. Um, so she switched. Um, the stuff that you find in the store, like the frozen stuff that you can buy for what a, a big bag for what five bucks, mm -hmm. two bucks. Yeah, it's it's powder, and you don't know what you're gonna get. It's probably instant potatoes and inst and uh, like craft dinner. Okay, like the craft dinner powder cheese. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Shelly said I can smell the onions and the butter. <laughs> oh, I can. Sure yeah, can. you could. <laughs> Shelly has to come on next and yeah. do her uh, and, and prune probe. I love it. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Did, Mark, did I do it right? Yes, Mark, please comment. Did we do it right? Did we do it right, Mark? <laughs> You're the typically good Ukrainian there. Thanks, ladies, for joining me on Nearest Kitchen. It was so much fun. It was a blast. Thank, Thank you for yeah. having us. This is so good. Stay tuned, guys, next week on Nearest Kitchen, where we will be making delicious Filipino sinagang. Bye, guys. Have a great mm. weekend. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.